Hello, Driving Intelligence. Uh, this is part three of a series I'm doing uh, with regard to a valve body modification for a 4R70W transmission that goes into a uh, 2002 F-150. This time I'm uh, disassembling and uh, then reassembling the valve body. Uh, I'm just going to point out some features. There are a lot of videos out there and a lot of uh, material that shows absolute uh, <laughs> nauseating detail about how to, uh, how to do this. I'm going to talk a little bit about the things that I ran into, uh, point out uh, some features, uh, but I'm going to try to do this quickly. Uh, the instructions that come with the, uh, the parts that I've used um, are pretty good. Um, what I did is I read those, those uh, manuals and parts many, many times. I went online and, uh, and studied various material. And uh, my first time through uh, the, uh, and putting the valve body back into the vehicle, it, it ran perfectly as I showed in part one of this series. So I'm going to give you a, a brief overview of what I did, uh, point out a few features, and uh, then we'll go on from there. And then I'll get into part four, which is uh, other elements of the transmission that I, uh, I modified that, where I did not have to remove the transmission. I actually uh, could do this work while the, the transmission was still in the vehicle, but the valve body was removed. Here's the valve body that uh, is off of the transmission I'm going to be rebuilding for the 2002 F-150. I'd already rebuilt uh, with great success the original valve body, um, but I wanted to show you how to disassemble this quickly. Uh, there's a gasket that's on top of this that I've already removed, um, which is easy. There's nothing holding that down once you remove the valve body. Um, but there's these two uh, accumulator plates. These are for the shift uh, accumulators. They easily come off four bolts each, and they, they only have one orientation that they can go on. So don't worry about the orientation when you remove this. Um, but all the, uh, just take the bolts out. You'll see, you'll see there are passages underneath here. The, for the fluid to flow. It directs the fluid so you obviously know that that's going down on top of the separator plate. Same with this one. So now this is ready to come off. Uh, one thing I want you to note is that there are bolts that go through two of them for pinning. This, these pins locate the valve body on the transmission. Um, those don't have to come out now, but just remember that you need to keep these located separately. You can tell by the uh, you can tell by the the look of these bolt heads that they're different from the rest of these. Separator plate comes off. Uh, there's a gasket underneath here. Um, one thing I want to show you this this two three two three shift accumulator location. You can see some damage here. And probably um, there's some uh, fluid flow that's going through here. The experts say that that fluid that's leaking through because of this uh, constant uh, tapping, which will affect your, uh, your shift performance. That's why a lot of people recommend uh, that you change this. I got the tough plate that I showed in the first video to, uh, to get rid of this issue, which also comes with a little cup to prevent this point loading on this uh, separator plate. Now we've got the valve body open to the business side, and this is where you'll find all your valves. Um, just to point out a couple things, you've got the, uh, the square filter here that you want to keep track of and make sure you put it back in the proper location. And this is the location of the torque converter check valve uh, that prevents the torque converter from being drained while the engine's not moving. You'll take that out and, uh, and make sure you keep track of that as well. You'll see in here, um, <clears throat> these are the check balls. When I show you my actual valve body in the next part of this video, you'll find out <clears throat> that I found one of the, the uh, check balls in the wrong location. There was no way it could have moved into the wrong location, but you'll see that in a moment. Um, I recommend changing those. They're very cheap. You can find them very cheap online, several dollars for a pack of um, eight or ten, I can't recall. Um, but that's pretty much it. Then you, uh, then you go through and uh, replace the valves that you wish to replace, uh, most of which I did replace. Okay, so 
I'm not going to take you through this, it's pretty simple, but I wanted to point out the various valves that I replaced um, to get the better performance. So starting up here at the top, you're going to replace the pressure regulator um, and the associated pressure regulator boost valve and sleeve. Um, next I changed the bypass clutch control sleeve, which is right here. The converter pressure regulator valve, which is right here. And I, uh, I also changed this valve. I don't recall the, uh, the name, but I'll have to reference that later on. Um, there's a valve here that needs to be replaced, a solenoid pressure regulator valve. You'll also replace the overdrive servo boost sleeve and the overdrive servo pressure regulator in this location. And each of these has a clip. Um, and the clips are relatively easy to remove, but you need to take care to put your finger over this because when you remove this these springs can't shoot these valve assemblies out. Um, what I did is I thoroughly cleaned it with all the valves in place then I removed each valve one at a time cleaned it again and then uh, inserted the new valve with the clip and went on to the next one so I didn't get parts mixed up. Uh, for me that was the easiest way to, uh, to replace these valves without getting all the components in one little container and getting confused with where everything went. Okay, I, since I forgot the name of this, I'll, I'll give, do a demonstration on this one. This is the 2-3 shift valve. I forgot the name of this in the previous part of the video. Um, but what you're going to do is gently pry up this clip. But you're going to want to put your finger over the valve to make sure it doesn't shoot out. Let me just make sure you can see this while I'm doing it. Okay, clip comes out easily and now the valve is loose. You can see it's starting to come out and you're gonna use this to to push against the valve inside here to remove it. And you can see how that can easily spit out. Now I can uh, pull the entire assembly out as such. All right, so here it is coming out. Uh, you'll have to remove shift uh, valve here to get this out the rest of the way. There's a C-clip that comes off. It's very simple. Um, so there you get the idea of how to remove these, uh, these valves. Um, you'll put this back together the same way. And again, I, I recommend doing this one at a time because you'll get all the, uh, the clips confused. Here you can see that I'll put the clip back on and the assembly is complete. So you'll get the appropriate parts in the kit that you need to replace each of these valves. Uh, it's that simple. But again, pull it out, get all the springs out, everything, clean it thoroughly, put the new ones in with the clip, move on to the next one. And uh, clean it each time, which will prevent you from mixing up the valves. I disassembled the uh valve body and there's an interesting thing I found. I was looking for any kind of problems that would have caused my shift performance issues. What I've noticed is that this check valve is in the wrong location. It belongs here. Um, somehow either it was installed incorrectly at the factory. I, I don't know how it would have ended up in this location. There's no way, there's no path that takes it over to this location. So this check valve is incorrectly located. All the valve body work has been completed. Um, the only thing that remains is putting on the separator plate with the associated gaskets. Here you can see I've put the uh, new check balls in. I didn't want to go with the old check balls and they're all properly located. Various springs and valves in this assembly have been changed uh, primarily from Sonax but also uh, from the shift kit that I got from Technology Products. And um, so it's ready to be buttoned up and uh, put back into the vehicle.
Abe and I would like you to subscribe, hit that thumbs up, and provide comments below. See you next time on Driving Intelligence.